Watson. Get dressed quickly. There's a cab waiting for us. Why? What's the matter? The Brook Street business. Any fresh news? For God's sake, come at once, P. Trevelyan. Has the body been touched? No. Where is the page? Nowhere to be found. <laughs> Good morning, Inspector. Mr. Holmes, delighted to see you. Now, please take a look. We were just about to take him down. was driven out of his senses by fright. The bed has been well slept in. There was his impression deep enough for all to see. It is about five in the morning, you know, that suicides are most common. That would be about the time that he hanged himself. It seems to be in a very deliberate affair. Yes, from the rigidity of the limbs, I'd say he'd been dead about three hours. Thank you, Watson. Noticed anything peculiar about the room? I found these in the fireplace. This is Havana. And these others are the cigars of the peculiar sort which are imported by the Dutch from their East Indian colonies. They're usually wrapped in straw, you know, and are thinner for their length than any other brand. I don't suppose you've read my monograph on cigars and cigar ash. Well, I am um, the... No, of course not. Thank you. These have been smoked with a holder, and these without. These have been cut by a not very sharp knife. And these have had their ends bitten off by a set of very excellent teeth. There were three men here last night. Good heavens. It... But nothing was stolen, so what were they doing here? That is what we have to find out. How did they get in? The same way we did, through the front door. But the door was barred in the morning. Then it was barred after they left. Well, how do you know that? I saw that traces. If you will just give me a few moments, Inspector, I may be able to give you some further information. Don't move, Watson.
They entered the hall, the older man first, the younger man second, and the unknown man in the rear. They ascended the stairs. With the help of a wire, they forced the key. Even without the lens, you can see where the pressure has been applied. You know, this matter was so prearranged that it is my belief that they brought with them some sort of block or pulley to serve as a gallows. Oh, yes, a gallows, Inspector. This was a revenge ritual. I dare say Mrs. Hudson will be a little put out when she sees all this. Eighty. January. February. March. Any good? Thank you. Biddle, Haywood and Moffat were released from prison just a few weeks ago, which was several years before their full term. It was news of their release which caused Blessington to panic and have this house secured. So it was not the fear of burglary that had frightened him? No, no, no. That was a mere blind. Ah. And so setting me up in practice was an elaborate charade to protect himself. However, wretch as he was, he was still living under the shield of British law. And I have no doubt, Inspector, that we shall see that though that shield may fail to guard, the sword of justice is still there to avenge. What's wrong? Well, it's just that I was going to spend the day writing the case of Dr. Trevelyan while the facts are still fresh. Oh, and you mean... Oh, I understand. Thanks awfully. It's just that it is difficult to concentrate otherwise. What will you entitle this particular account? <laughs> I didn't know you were interested in my writing. I am always interested in your choice of titles. Well, I thought I'd call it the Brook Street Mystery. No? Well, I myself would prefer the resident patient. But please do not let me influence you. The Brook Street mystery. No doubt would suffice. Hey, just before you go, if you want more relaxing stuff, you might know that I wrote a book, Seven Habits of Calm and Happy People, and now I even made an audiobook version. It's the best habits that work for me for being more calm, more at peace, and I think you're gonna like it too, so you can find it for free 
as a gift at finecom.com slash book. Finecom.com slash book.